Hello, welcome to our webinar today. We're going to be talking about understanding your immune system. Thank you for tuning in. This is your host, Nikki Cloud. And this has probably got to be one of the most fascinating things to learn about. I remember a few years ago, um, I was like, huh, I wonder what all the layers of the immune system does. I'm just curious how that works. Um, what I wasn't expecting was to learn what I did and to, and to really see what exactly our immune system does, how it's created to arm us and defend us. Um, and it was quite cool because once I understood how my body worked, then it made sense why it's important to give it good things and not bad things. Um, I, also, I was also able to understand when my, when my immune system didn't do its job when there was like an immune system error and that happens a lot of times so again you know how I am I, I promote education so please learn a little bit more about your immune system um, because it's really going to help you help yourself but also those that you're responsible for okay so what is the immune system and what it, what is its role in your health Okay, this is so important for you to understand that it's more than just a word. So the immune system um, is an amazing protection mechanism that is inside of your body, okay? And it is created, it's designed to defend you, okay? So we are surrounded by tons of pathogens. We're surrounded by uh, millions of bacteria, microbes, viruses, toxins, and parasites that would love nothing more on a daily basis to get past this barrier, get inside of your body and wreak havoc, okay? But thankfully, you have this amazing mechanism that on many different lines of defense stops these, prevents these from ever getting to your body, um, and that protects you so that you don't get sick, okay? So there's two reasons why I want you to learn more about your immune system. One. Um, you know, it's a working, it's working around the clock, 24 seven and thousands of different ways that you don't even recognize. But once you learn about it and understand these things, then you become more empowered. And two, it's fascinating as all heck to really learn how our body is created and designed. Okay. So I want you to recognize and see your immune system. And by that, I just want you to visually imagine this. And maybe you've experienced some of these things so you can look back on them and be like, oh yeah, that's what my immune system was doing. Oh, that's awesome, that's rad. Okay, I want you to look, I want you to see how your body has defended you in the past. So for an example, topical wounds, have you ever gotten a cut or a sliver in your, in your finger? Um, what happens is all sorts of bacteria and viruses will enter the body through that break in the skin. When you get a splinter, you also have the sliver of wood, which is kind of your body sees it as a foreign object inside the body, and it wants to remove it. It wants to get rid of it right away. So your immune system goes to work, and it eliminates the invader, so the wood. And then guess what happens? That puncture begins to heal itself. So have you ever seen a big cut on your hand just heal in a week? Okay, that's your immune system doing that. Now, the, if the immune system misses something in that cut or that wound, what happens is it becomes infected. So it'll become inflamed, and oftentimes it will fill with pus. Now, you guys, I want you to recognize something here. This is, the, this is your immune system doing its job. Okay, by doing that, it's able... Um, it, it inflames to protect itself and to protect that area. Um, so it's working. It's doing exactly what it needs to do. Kind of like when you get a mosquito bite. It's so annoying, right? Because you have this red, um, itchy bump on your skin. But that is a sign, it is a visible sign that your immune system is at work. So let's also look at when you get sick. So did you know each day you inhale thousands of germs, okay, both bacteria and viral? They're floating in our air, they're all around us, and every day, no matter what, you are inhaling those. Now what happens though is your immune system is able to deal with them with, with no problem, okay? It, um, you inhale, your immune system notices them, and the saliva in, in your mouth is, an, is antibacterial. Your saliva is an antibacterial property, and it's able to completely kill them, okay? But sometimes a germ will get past 
um, the immune system and you will catch a cold or get a flu or maybe something more serious. So a cold or a flu is a visible sign that your immune system failed. Okay, hello, are you getting tons of colds and flus? Are you always getting sick? If that's the case, then your lines of defenses in your immune system, your first lines of defenses are failing and chances are it's because your immune system is suppressed. So what are you doing on a daily basis? What are you putting in and on your body that is weakening your immune system? Hopefully you're not using anything that's synthetic. Okay, so if that's happening, if that's happening in your family, you know you need to boost the immune system. The fact that you get over the cold or the flu is a visible sign that your immune system was able to eliminate the issue after learning about it. That's pretty cool, right? So maybe the first line of defense is weak, but hey, you were able to get over it <clears throat> and look at how long you're sick for. That's a great indication that tells you how well your body is able to fight off things. So each day you eat hundreds of germs. You eat germs, okay? Um, most of them will die in your saliva or the acid in your stomach. Occasionally, one will get through and cause food poisoning. Has, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever experienced this? Um, there is normally a very, very visible effect of this breach of the immune system because you will, you will um, encounter vomiting and or diarrhea. Okay, we hate these. This is awful. It's no fun to get food poisoning. But how cool is it that this is your immune system's way of dispelling that germ? So have you ever eaten something and you feel like just, just sick? Um, allow yourself to be sick because that's your body's way of releasing that and getting rid of it. Now, there's all kinds of human ailments out there that are caused by uh, the immune system working in unexpected or incorrect ways that cause problems, okay, like autoimmune diseases um, or allergies, for example. Sometimes allergies are really just an immune system overreacting to certain stimuli that other people just don't react to at all. Um, some people have diabetes, which is caused by the immune system inappropriately attacking um, cells to the pancreas and destroying them. Some people have arthritis, which is caused by the immune system acting inappropriately in the joints. Um, in many different diseases, the cause is actually an immune system error. Okay, so if these things are happening, you want to focus in on your immune system and in strengthening the immune system. Um, sometimes we see the immune system um, because it prevents us from doing things that we would otherwise uh, benefit or that are beneficial. So for example, if you know somebody or if you yourself have ever had an organ transplant, um, it's harder. The immune system typically will want to, the, the immune system sees the organ transplant as a foreign invader and actually wants to get rid of it. Um, and so sometimes we see our, I mean, we see our immune system doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And in these situations, doctors will actually do immune suppressants to, um, to weaken the immune system in order to keep this transplant. It's amazing. So what does it mean when you don't feel good? So have you ever thought to yourself, man, I'm sick today. I wonder how this happened. Now, normally we're like, oh, well, little Johnny was sick at school and he, he brought it home and, and Sally got sick. Now, Sally wouldn't be getting sick if her immune system was strong. So don't, don't blame Johnny or Billy or Sally for bringing something to your house and getting you sick. Um, you are susceptible to so many different pathogens the second that you walk out of your house. So whether you get sick or you don't get sick, it's really, it's, it's you and it's your immune system. So take accountability for that. Now, there's a few different things that have to, um, that are a direct reflection of us getting sick. Okay. And I just want to touch on those so you can kind of understand. Mechanical damage. That's like a break or a tear. That's, that is definitely, um, that's visible. And so you can understand why you're not feeling good. Now, the biggest the biggest reason why people get sick and catch things is because of a vitamin or mineral deficiency. So vitamins and minerals are really the building block to our health and our foundation 
um, of, of supporting our immune system. And a lot of times what happens is in society today, we're not getting the nutrients that our body needs to fuel us and to keep our immune system strong. And so what happens is when we are deficient in good food, so when we're when we're eating fast food or eating things that are GMO or synthetic, um, or maybe we're just like, we're not eating balanced meals, we're not drinking plenty of water, then guess what? We're susceptible to getting sick and we catch everything that we come in contact with. So make sure that you are healthy there. Now, vitamins and minerals play a huge, huge role in, in serious diseases down the road. So for example, um, vitamin D is is really, really beneficial um, in promoting uh, the proper amounts of calcium to our body. If we don't get this over time, we can get rickets, which is a disease that weakens the bones and people will end up getting osteoporosis, osteopenia. Okay, this is preventable. This is preventable with eating the right foods. Um, vitamin C, a lot of times here in the United States, we're deficient in A, C, B, um, our foods, our nutrients are stripped from these minerals and vitamins, and so we're deficient, which weakens our immune system and leaves us susceptible to a lot of diseases like scurvy, um, arthritis, um, anemia, being um, low in iron. Okay, these things, if we're low and deficient, guess what? We will get sick, our immune system will become compromised. Um, okay, so the next one is organ compromised. Um, and in some cases, an organ is damaged or weakened, again, because of deficiency in minerals and vitamins, um, or maybe it's just something you were born with. In this case, it's a domino effect. It causes other issues in the body. Um, there's genetic diseases. Um, what, what that means is it just causes a coding error in the DNA. Um, again, these can all be fixed if you have the right tools to use. Um, in cancer, occasionally a cell will change in a way that causes it to reproduce uncontrollably. So when you catch something and you get sick, do you ever just, from now on actually, I just want you to think to yourself, okay, what do you think the root cause of this is? Chances are it's, vit it's vitamin and min mineral deficiency. So I want to teach you guys something really cool, um, and that's the difference between bacteria and viruses. So your, um, they're very different, P.S. These are not the same things. And um, it's important for you to understand what they both are. So bacteria are single-celled organisms that are really simple. Um, bacteria are completely independent organisms able to eat and reproduce. I want you to think of bacteria as fish swimming in the ocean of your body. So under the right conditions, bad conditions of your body being um, suppressed, Bacteria can reproduce extremely, extremely fast. So for example, one bacteria divides into two separate bacterias, perhaps um, once every 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and at that rate, one bacteria can become millions in just a few hours. So what happens? What happens then? We're susceptible to bacterial infections. What happens when we have too much bacteria inside of our body? It causes candida. Candida then causes inflammation. Inflammation causes immune suppression, um, which causes autoimmune diseases, okay? So we need to really be cautious of bacteria infections, and we need to be killing bacteria infections with things that actually kill bacteria, um, the bad bacteria, not the good bacteria. So a lot of times I tell people, make sure you're on a really good probiotic on a daily basis, not just on a cleansing basis, but daily, because this is going to support the healthy bacteria inside of your body. Now, we want bacteria inside of our gut, okay? That is something that we do want um, because, because it, it, help, it helps, okay? We want good gut bacteria. So let me tell you a little bit about viruses, okay? Viruses are different. It's a different game altogether. Um, virus, a virus is not alive. And in fact, a virus particle is nothing but a fragment of DNA in a protective coat. Um, and the virus comes in contact with cells and it attaches it to our cell wall, injects DNA into that cell. And then, it, and then the DNA uses the machinery inside the living cell to reproduce new virus particles. So what happens is this virus hijacks your cells, kills the cell, 
um, and then creates a factory. It just creates a factory for this virus. Okay, so you have trillions of cells inside of your body. Okay, I want you to imagine those frozen peas that you buy at your local supermarket. Um, you have trillions of those inside of your body, and each of them have a different job. Okay, each of them are responsible for communicating to a different part of your body. So what happens when you have viruses that go into your cells and hijack them and create um, an eating frenzy of, of viruses? Okay, what happens to all those cells and their communication mechanism? It goes down. It's not, it's not able to communicate to your brain to process feelings or emotions. It doesn't communicate to your digestive system um, or the tissues in your body or the skin to do what it's supposed to do. So if you notice your body and you notice certain areas of your body that are just not optimal, that are not functioning, that are weakened, that are suppressed, have you ever thought to yourself, hmm, I wonder if those cells that communicate to those, those systems are damaged. Okay, again, this is why I teach people why it's so important to use things that support the body and not hurt the body because unfortunately a lot of things out there don't kill viruses. Okay, and, and we need stuff that kills viruses. A lot of things out there kill bacteria, the good and the bad. Well, we need the good. The good helps us. The bad is bad for us. So again, what are you using? Now, when it comes to viral or bacterial infections, um, they're able to invade your body and reproduce. So a lot of times you'll notice um, you get really, really sick. Okay, so you get side effects from bacteria and viruses, which is an infection. Um, so for example, the strep throat bacteria releases toxins that cause inflammation in your throat. Okay, that's an infection. The polio virus releases toxins that destroy nerve cells. Um, leading to paralysis with some people. So some bacteria are benign or um, beneficial. And like I was like I was telling you earlier, um, you have millions of bacteria in your intestines, and they help you digest food. Okay, so many bacteria are harmful once they get into your body or bloodstream, but we kind of need them in our intestines. It's a good thing. Okay, so the three different things that your immune system is responsible for doing. So imagine that your immune system has like this, this armor barrier around it. Um, it's going to prevent bacteria and viruses from entering your body. If, back, if a bacteria or virus does get into the body, the immune system tries to detect it and eliminate it before it can make itself a home and reproduce. If the virus or bacteria is able to reproduce and start causing problems, your immune system is in charge of eliminating it. Okay, so I'm going to go through really the, the, the first barrier that your, body, that your body has, okay? And I like to just kind of think of this as your own unique barrier suit. So if you want, think of your favorite superhero. You know how they have this very unique and design um, suit that they wear, and usually it has a purpose, right? So Iron Man here, he created this suit for multiple different reasons that really sustain his overall goal. Your body, you are just born with that, okay? So the first line of defense is, um, and it's the most obvious, right? It's your skin. How often do we take advantage and not, like, really stop and think about what our skin does on a daily basis? I know I didn't until I learned about this. Um, skin is very important. It's, like, probably the most important part to your immune system. It acts as a primary boundary between germs in your body. So part of your skin's job is to act as a barrier in much as the same way that plastic wrap protects food. So did you know your, your skin your skin secretes antibacterial substances. So it's so it's so fascinating. So these substances that secrete from your skin that you can't even see explain why you don't wake up in the morning with a layer of mold growing on your skin. So most bacteria and spores that land on your skin will die immediately because of because of the antibacterial that your body, your skin just naturally produces. Um, your nose is another line of defense. Your nose, mouth, and eyes have tears and mucus that contain an enzyme that will kill bacteria. Okay, your saliva is also antibacterial. Um, your nasal passage and lungs are coated in mucus and germs if they're not killed on your skin or your saliva, 
um, if they get into any other of those orifices, the mucus kills it, okay? So um, if any bacteria or virus wants to gain entry to your body, it must first pass through these lines of defenses. So what happens when um, our body is comp compromised or our immune system is obviously weakened and something is able to get passed through these lines of defenses? Okay, this happens. It's no different than your security, um, your security software on your computer or maybe you have an alarm system to your house. Okay, so what happens when that first line of defense is compromised? Is there an override? Is there an override system that then will kick into gear and we'll go to work and um, and put up another line of defense. Okay, it's the same as the body. And yes, the, the answer is yes. What happens when the first line of defense in our immune system fails, these major organs then kick into gear. Okay, so I'm just going to share a little bit about each of them. Um, I'm not going to get into great detail, but I think they're really fascinating to understand. If you've ever had a blood test, um, and some of these have come up, come up in the blood test off, um, it's interesting to understand why it's related to the immune system. Okay, so. I'm going to go through each of these just real fast. So the lymphatic system, you're probably really familiar with the lymphatic system because it's known as the sewer system of your body. Whenever you go to the doctor, um, your glands are usually checked. Usually you will get swollen lymph nodes in, in your throat, your groins, your armpits. Um, you probably feel them sometimes or maybe the doctor will examine them. Now this is a sign that you have an infection if you have a swollen lymph node. Okay. Again, this is the immune system swelling and flaming in that area to take care of that issue. Um, so the lymphatic system, it's really important that you're drinking a lot of water every day because you want to flush these toxins through your lymphatic system and through your body. Okay. So white blood cells. Um, these are the cells of the immune system that are involved in protecting the body against both infectious disease and, and foreign invaders. Bone marrow produces new blood cells, both red and white. Um, red blood cells, these are the most common blood, uh, blood cell, and they deliver oxygen to the body tissues um, via the circulatory system. So hormones are chemical messengers that are secreted directly into the blood They carry that are carried to organs and tissues of the body to exert their functions. Um, and, of course, they have, you know, there's a different process and, and there's different benefits for, for sending hormones to different parts of the body. So the spleen plays multiple supporting roles in the body. It acts as a filter for blood as part of the immune system. Old red blood cells are recycled in the spleen and platelets and white blood cells are stored, are stored there also. The spleen also helps fight certain kinds of bacteria that causes pneumonia and meningitis. So the thymus is also really interesting because it's instrumental in the production of maturity um, in a specific white blood cell called the T cell. And this protects the body from certain threats, including viruses and infections. Uh, the thymus produces and secretes a hormone necessary for T cell development and production. Um, and the cool thing and like I was sharing with you guys the other day, if you were on the live webinar, um, the, t the interesting thing about the thymus is it, is it is the strongest and it works the best when you are born. Um, and actually your first few years of life, it actually, um, it defends your immune system more than any other part of your body your first few years of life. And in fact, when you, um, the older you be, the older you get, your thymus actually just becomes like um, just a fatty deposit. It actually doesn't have any more benefit because it's already done its job. So when you think about your first few years of life, so you think about babies and you think about all these things that they're susceptible to, um, I don't think it's a coincidence that their thymus is producing the support of their immune system the most, and then all of a sudden it dissolves and goes away after time. Pretty interesting, right? Um, the complement system, this is really just, um, it consists of a, a number of small proteins found in the blood. Um, it has the ability to, to really just help the antibody production of white blood cells. It clears pathogens and organisms from the body. 
Um, getting into the complement system, I had to learn about enzymes and proteins that are just way too complicated and are not necessary 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 to really learn when we're just really covering the basis of um, you know the main barriers of your immune system. So I highly recommend if you want to go back and learn in, in more detail about these systems, I highly recommend it. Um, remember, these systems kick in, these organs kick in, and they get to work if there is an immune system error inside of our body. So I'm going to leave you guys with just a few thoughts. So you're the gatekeeper of your health. Um, I think once you recognize how your health works, how your immune system works, and you're able to appreciate it. I hope that after listening to this webinar and watching this webinar, you have a whole new appreciation for your, this body that you were blessed with. Um, it is by no chance that it does everything that it does. Um, it just seems impossible. So with appreciation for our body, I think we're able to pay attention to it. We love it. We support it. We want to be kind to it. And by paying attention to our body, we're able to support it better. And by supporting our body better, you have the right tools to do that. So please make sure you're using those on a daily basis to really promote and sustain your immune system's job. Okay, your immune system knows what to do, but are you giving it the right things or are you against your immune system? Okay, it's really up to you. Don't blame the people you work with. Don't blame the kids that, that go to school with your kids for you guys being sick all the time because it's not their fault. It's your immune system's fault. And you, at the end of the day, are responsible for your own health and the health of those in your home. So thank you so much for being on this webinar. If you weren't with, with us live earlier this week, um, I hope you can share this with your family and friends and maybe they can learn something new. So thank you for, for being responsible and for being here and learning more about your health. And I will talk to you guys next Monday. Bye-bye.